The Iraqi Prime Minister Mohammad Shia al-Sudani has made his first visit to the Islamic Republic. Fighting terrorism, maintaining mutual security, and extending economic cooperation were the key priorities that were outlined with Iran's President Ibrahim Raisi. Now, Iran has told Iraq's central government that it is serious about its national security and will not tolerate terrorists operating against Iran from the Iraqi Kurdistan region. In this edition of the Spotlight, we will look at the level of cooperation between Iraq and Iran on fighting terrorists and why Iraqi Kurdistan remains a hotbed of terrorists acting against Iran's national security. First, let me introduce our guest for this edition of the Spotlight. Don Debar, activist and commentator, joins us from Ossining, New York. Also joining us is Mohammad Ali Araki, who's a journalist and political analyst, joining us from London. Welcome to you both. I'll start with you, Mohammad Ali Araki. This uh, is an important visit, uh, not only because you have the new Iraqi Prime Minister, by the invitation of uh, the Islamic Republic to have come to Iran, but also because of, uh, obviously, some of the issues that we're going to get into, such as these uh, uh, border insecurity that has erupted. Um, Quote, from the point of view of Iran and the Iraqi government, security, peace, and stability are very important, and the fight against terrorist groups, organized crimes, drug trafficking, and any source of insecurity that threatens the region. Those were the key issues that was discussed and agreed upon. Tell us what your take is on this visit and, of course, uh, some of these basic points that uh, were mutually agreed upon. Yes, uh, thank you very much for giving me the honor to join you on the program today. Firstly, the political change that have occurred in Iraq are very important and strategical changes. The reason to that we can see is uh, the Kurdistan region, where it was previously a place where it was full of uh, insecurity and uh, instability, and the previous government of Iraq was not taking the case seriously. We could uh, witness this from one of the examples is from the year 2020 until now, where the late General Qasem Soleimani was martyred. And the Islamic Republic of Iran waited for the Iraqi government for a period of time for them to take the necessary action, but the necessary action was not taken. So the recent political changes have resulted in this change to occur in the coming days, hopefully. And I strongly believe that the current, uh, the official that uh, visited the Islamic Republic of Iran today, he is uh, completely against the uh, benefits, his uh, stance and his approach is against the benefits of the United States of America and its allies. So therefore, the United States of America, we witnessed that from the beginning, they were attempting and they were saying that we shall not be working with anyone who is linked to Iran or its allies. This inclu includes the uh, different uh, groups that exist within Iraq. And Kurdistan region is a nest for spies, for terrorists. And this was a place where the United States of America used to do the uh, terrorist activities that they were doing against the Islamic Republic of Iran. And we witnessed a very important change within the, from 2020 onwards, where uh, uh -huh. they moved down towards uh, the Kurd Kurdistan region because they found it a uh, safer place. And uh, no matter how much the Iraqi government, the effort they made, uh, they did not uh, obey the Iraqi government and sure. they were not taking the safety of the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, seriously. And uh, this was uh, seen during the different events. And uh, so the IRGC uh, did not and will not uh, tolerate this. And uh, they replied in the past uh, few months uh, that on uh, various events and they've given a chance to the Iraqi government and uh, I personally believe that uh, within the uh, coming uh, weeks they will be very uh, it will be a game changer the events that uh, will occur in Iraq and okay. uh, um, and uh, the White House is certainly uh, not happy with uh, the change that uh, will be occurring this could be seen from today well uh, we'll see we'll see the reactions coming from uh, from the White House I think on this but Don DeBar um, when we want to take a look at, uh, before we get into some of the different uh, um, events that surrounded uh, this uh, visit before, uh, that built up to this visit, um, there was a, quite a different picture that was being painted that pretty much could be summed up in a sentence. Iraq, Iran is bombing uh, the Iraqi Kurdistan region to divert attention away from 
what's happening inside the country. But that's not, that's not painting the real picture, is it? Not at all. Um, it's a, first, you know, it's easy to divert attention in the Western, you know, in, in the U.S. And, and EU particularly, and the U.K., with that kind of uh, media nonsense, because there's not really an understanding of the facts on the ground in that region among the American population, for sure, and, and for a good part of the European population that has some sort of amnesia towards this. You know, we're talking a region, okay, so, so Kurdistan, quote unquote, uh, bridges uh, Turkey, a good sizable chunk of Turkey, a, a thick slice of Turkey, one might say, um, a, a little slice of uh, Syria, parts of Iraq, Iran, and even Armenia, um, and, and in an area that uh, where the, the na national boundaries really are uh, not the organic ones from you know the history of the region, uh, but rather a sort of legacy of the mandates of the European you know co colonial period. Uh, there are tensions that have been stoked by the Europeans that were designed really into the uh, configurations of these states. Um, and they have been used to the advantage of the colonial powers to keep the people in the region at each other's throats. This meeting, uh, you know, this invitation by Iran uh, to the prime minister, to the government, in essence, uh, of Iraq, the new government, uh, is an attempt to bridge some of the differences that have existed. Um, and in addition to that, uh, th it, it looks in context with Turkey starting to make moves also uh, along these lines where uh, th th there's possibly some harmonization of all of the different antagonisms locally against the outside influences that have been stoking these tensions for many years. And so it's possible that a ball has been set in motion here that could result in some measure of unity among a number of countries that have not been able to find that for a long time. Sure. And I think that operates to the advantage of the bulk of the world and against the interests of imperialism. All right, uh, instead of me uh, explaining this, Mohammed Ali Iraqi, I think you could do a better job as to why Iran uh, was bombing these positions in the Iraqi Kurdistan, uh, which obviously involved uh, terrorist activities against the Islamic Republic, which threatened Iran's national security. And it is said that they were using what was happening inside of Iran uh, not as a pretext, but as, but as an excuse in order to uh, go ahead with their anti-Iran plots. Can you please explain to us uh, what elements we're talking about? What is the deal there with Iraqi Kurdistan that Iran uh, deemed it appropriate to be bombed? So we had many weapons and uh, different uh, terrorists. They were attempting to send them into Iran, smuggling them, smuggling terrorists, smuggling weapons. Uh, this was uh, clearly available and is currently available on uh, the different media outlets. The uh, Iranian uh, security forces, they caught various uh, packages and uh, various sums of uh, weapons uh, attempting to uh, enter the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran. And uh, the Iranian security forces have uh, stated that uh, when a threat comes close to uh, the Iranian borders, when it's kilometers away, they can still uh, trace this and uh, they can trace the uh, the location from where it was sent. And uh, this was the Iraqi Kurdistan. And so the Islamic Republic of Iran, Iran uh, gave a chance to uh, the Iraqi Kurdistan for them to uh, stop this. But unfortunately, uh, due to the current uh, situation, uh, we witnessed that the United States of America find found a uh, safe place, and that was uh, Iraqi Kurdistan, to to use it as a, a place to uh, control and uh, to uh, instigate the mm. protests in Iran. And uh, so this is why uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran did not tolerate this. And uh, there were many people killed, uh, many Iranians, and uh, there, were me there were terrorists caught. And uh, they were all caught coming down from this area. And uh, so the Islamic Republic of Iran will not tolerate this. And uh, we uh, can uh, see this uh, with the events sure. that have sure. uh, occurred and uh, will be occurring in the coming days. Well, uh, and, and to just expand a little bit more here, just to get the full picture, what Iran has said, uh, and I'm going to come to you, Don Debar, what Iran has said that they wanted to contain these separatist elements. 
which uh, some have infiltrated into Iran along with weapons. They've killed security forces. They have blown up the country's security centers uh, in some respects. And you also have, uh, to back that up, 70 documents that Iran has on presence of these terrorists. Um, and uh, uh, it also has documents about the bases, educational centers, and meetings of these armed terrorists. All right, so, so, so we have th this situation where uh, on a number of occasions our guest Don Debar has mentioned the U.S. Uh, maybe you can tell us what is the U.S. deal with the Kurds because it's confusing what they're doing in terms of the Kurds in Syria. But overall, what is the deal? And then you could put into uh, perspective with the regional countries, in particular, obviously, Iran and Turkey, as to what, US stand, what the U.S. position is with the Turks in terms of not only uh, but with the Kurds in terms of uh, Turkey and then Iran. Hey, Don Debar. Yes. Yeah, Don oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, okay. Well, I, I remember, for example, the first U.S. invasion of Iraq in 1990-91, uh, uh, how uh, an uprising of the Kurds in northern Iraq was encouraged by the United States, and the U.S. essentially promised that they would back them uh, to establish a state. And then the U.S. pulled out. Uh, and they made some kind of a deal with Saddam Hussein at that point in time, pulled the forces back out, and uh, they, those uh, Kurds, uh, Kurdish nationalists were left on their own to face uh, the Iraqi military, and uh, they were, you know, they, they got a bad deal out of that. The U.S. has put them forward in Syria as uh, sort of the meat-grinding troops on the ground to fight the Syrian government. Uh, really, the, the Kurdish claim on Syria is a pretty thin one compared to the Kurdish claim on Turkey. Uh, the U.S. has used the uh, Kurds in Turkey as a counterbalance and a uh, sort of a stick against the uh, Turkish uh, government in order to make them, uh, you know, keep them in line. Uh, Turkey has been treated as sort of the redheaded stepchild of Europe in a lot of ways. It's a key piece of real estate in geostrategic terms. It's been one of the ways that they've been able to pressure Russia since World War II, really, as a member of NATO when NATO was founded in the early 50s. And yet, uh, promises of uh, entry into the EU and, and other benefits of uh, you know being, being treated as an equal European country have been elusive. And so uh, the Kurds are a, a wedge that they've used you know, in that respect as well. And, and we're seeing some shift around these things with respect to Turkey's position towards the United States. And we've seen with the election of this government in Iraq a shift, certainly, in, in the direction vis-a-vis uh, -vis the United States. It seems very strongly suggested by the, what the people were saying at the presser today, for example, uh, with the Ir Iraqi prime minister saying that there will be no... Uh, you know, wars or, or fight or, or struggle or battle against Iran uh, taking place based on Iraqi territory, which is a novelty because that kind of activity has been going on for a long time. One might even say back to the mid-80s. Sure. That was a, actually a great uh, achievement coming out of and result coming out of this trip to the Islamic uh, Republic. Uh, Mamad al-Araki, uh, we're quickly running out of time, unfortunately. We have to talk about the elephant in the room, which it seems like uh, one way or another Israel is involved here. Now, we know uh, that Iran has actually um, went through and bombed the Iraqi Kurdistan region recently. It's not too recent, actually. But uh, we know that Israel actually has uh, a presence uh, against Iran's security from the Iraqi uh, Kurdistan region, in which uh, they have bases there. Now, according to the last operation, that was a major one. And that was a very delicate operation because it happened a little bit down further from where the U.S. presence was where uh, Iran uh, actually, the IRGC, came out, claimed responsibility, and struck uh, what it called was the Israeli Strategic Center. And at, uh, from then on, there have been Israeli spies that, that have been arrested. And I'm looking down a list of some of the gear that they actually intercepted, Iran, that is, um, in which uh, it had uh, things uh, such as bombs that were planted inside furniture, stools, etc. Uh, now, not to get into that, what is Israel exactly doing there uh, when you have the Iraqi Kurdistan uh, denying its presence altogether. If you can please give us a background on that. Yes, so when we are talking about the Zionist regime of Israel and uh, its allies, and when we compare them to the Islamic Republic of Iran, 
there's something very clear here that uh, we need to pay attention to, and that is the Islamic Republic of Iran always comes out with proof and honesty if they witness something. Now, the United States of America, obviously, is in the region in Kurdistan as well. And uh, the Zionist regime of Israel, to do anything they can, all the attempts they can, in order to cause insecurity in the Islamic Republic of Iran. And so, as I mentioned in, from the beginning of the interview till now, they have found uh, the Iraqi Kurdistan as a safe place. And so, again, the government that is based in the Kurdistan region, they do not want to uh, be uh, dealing with the uh, side effects of uh, hosting uh, America and uh, the Zionist regime of Israel, because they know that the Islamic Republic of Iran is uh, very sensitive with this. Uh, we can uh, witness the same that goes on for the uh, Zionist regime of Israel. They don't like the uh, Iran and its allies on their borders. So that same same goes on for the Islamic Republic of Iran. So that is why the Islamic Republic of Iran took the necessary actions that they deem necessary. And the other thing is, is that because the uh, the uh, style, the model of uh, the Iraqi, the, Kurd the government in Kurdistan, the model is a uh, a uh, model of uh, basically bowing down to the West and uh, the Zionist regime of Israel, they're not capable of uh, not uh, not uh, hosting these people. So that is why uh, they do what they can, but uh, they don't succeed. And uh -huh. that's why the, uh, the uh, Kurdistan government in uh, Iraq, in the Kurdistan region, that is why uh, they stopped uh, and they did what they can, but obviously did not work out. Yeah, they have to actually do a lot more based on what has come out from today. Uh, Don DeBar, uh, and to continue on this line of thought, we know uh, that this is not a new thing in terms of the relationship between Israel and, and Iraq's Kurdistan, or Iraq's Kurds, I should say, that it does date back. And uh, there has been, uh, obviously, based on a history check, if you do, uh, and look at the situation, that Mossad has maintained a network of spies, actually, in Iraq's um, Kurdish regions. Um, and uh, interestingly, you had uh, the now prime minister for the fourth or fifth time, Netanyahu, I forget how many times he's been prime minister now, uh, where he has ha actually come out and cheered for an independent Iraqi uh, region. Uh, are we going to see a reinvigorated Netanyahu pushing energy, which maybe he has done so already, uh, given the fact that he's looking at Iran as a bait or, or as a place that wants to obviously divide? and perhaps put its focus there. And if you could tell us the U.S. role in that. It's difficult to predict what's going to happen. I mean, the groundwork seems laid for that in isolation. But the United States and the EU, NATO, all of that, they're really bogged in this war in Ukraine. Um, Turkey is uh, looking at both sides right now. No one really knows how that's going to come down. Um, this meeting today uh, with Prime Minister uh, al Sadani and President Raisi are, 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 is very promising in terms of resolving that, uh, you know, potential conflict or that area. And so, you know, it may be that whatever Netanyahu's intentions are, the U.S. may not give him enough uh, wherewithal to be that aggressive uh, because they really are not in a, maybe in a position to back it up. With, the, with Iran joining the SCO, China being more deeply involved in, in this region and also in, in uh, commonality with Russia, who is fighting NATO and the U.S. right now, uh, you know, the dynamics are much different in terms of the, the larger geopolitical picture. And I think Netanyahu, even though he, I mean, look, we have to look at what Israel is. Israel is a colony, you know, a European colony in, in that region. It's a European agent in that region. And so... Uh, it's going to act in, in tandem with whatever else is going on. It seems that the center of power is somewhere Langley, Pentagon, somewhere in the United States. The decisions are being made there. The bumbling is, is happening there. And, and I, I, I hope someone plans to keep Netanyahu on a tight leash because everything is really laden with dynamite right now. And if he acts as crazy as he has before, he could set off a much larger explosion than he planned to. Uh to, uh, in conclusion here, my last question, uh, Muhammad Ali Iraqi, 
uh, Iran's leader actually received uh, the Iraqi prime minister uh, to show the depth of the problem here in some sense where he came out and I'm going to quote Iran's uh, leader that the only solution is for the Iraqi government to extend its authority to the regions that are undermining Iran's security obviously referring to Iraqi Kurdistan now Iraq uh, uh, the Iraqi prime minister uh, also for his part said listen we're going to work with Iran we're going to uh, actually make sure that uh, there's going to be consultations made um, that uh, we will redeploy federal guards on the border between Iraqi uh, Kurdistan which is what he announced last week um, and, th and then in conclusion what Iran really wants which is my question to you is it wants um, a disarming of the groups there in terms of what they're doing and it wants uh, the central Iraqi government to actually go in and do that. So my question is, isn't that a very delicate balancing act that Iraqi central government needs to play in order to make sure that Iran's needs, in this case, are met? Uh, because obviously Iran's national security is uh, being uh, jeopardized. Uh, and do you think that's going to be done quickly? Yes, so uh, this is a very delicate case because uh, in the past years, before President uh, Sudani, uh, stepped into uh, power, we have uh, witnessed that the uh, Iraqi Kurdistan government uh, has not been cooperating with the uh, central government in Baghdad on various occasions uh, related to the oil of uh, Iraq and uh, other different cases. And uh, this is because uh, due to uh, various reasons, and one of them is uh, the uh, Western uh, interference. And uh, so this is a, a very delicate step that uh, the Iraqi government uh, will be taking. And uh, I uh, personally believe that okay. the way that the things have come out, uh, the, the uh, different events that have occurred in uh, the uh, past uh, months, uh, this will not take too long because uh, the Islamic Republic of Iran will not uh, tolerate uh, this going on. And uh, I could uh, say here that uh, pres that uh, Prime Minister uh, as sudani is one of uh, the well. allies and is, one is uh, aligned with the Islamic Republic of Iran. So uh, this uh, should happen uh, much more quicker in compared to uh, the previous uh, demands that uh, the Islamic Republic uh, made from the uh, government of uh, the uh, previous uh, Prime Minister, okay. Mr. Uh, Academy. Thank you so much. Sorry, we're just fresh out of time. I do apologize for that. Muhammad Ali Araki, journalist and political analyst. Don DeBar, thank you so much. Activist and commentator. And with that, we come to an end for this edition of The Spotlight. From Mikhail Tahoe and the team, it's goodbye. Until next time.